Going to the gynecologist wearing that paper gown, the whole thing can be uncomfortable. But those annual visits are key to women's health, including identifying certain cancers. A new survey shows not all women see that. With us this morning, gynecologic oncologist Dr. Sharon Lewin. Good morning, Dr. Lewin. Hi, good morning, Mary. What are some of the, the key findings from this survey? Let's start there. So this survey was actually conducted by Genentech of over a thousand women in the United States and found that women are more likely to see their eye doctors, their dentist, even their hairstylist mm -hmm. than see their OBGYN on a yearly basis. Why are annual OBGYN visits important? I touched on um, detecting certain types of cancer. What would you say? The annual visit or yearly visit to the OBGYN is so important to help prevent cervical cancer, to talk about risks for uterine and ovarian cancer, and to help modify lifestyles so that women can also prevent breast cancer, colon cancer, and other really serious health conditions like heart disease and osteoporosis. How prevalent are gynecologic cancers and, and who's most affected? So we do know that every nine minutes in the United States, a woman is diagnosed with a gynecologic cancer. So we see that younger women in the average age of about 40 are really affected with cervical cancer. Unfortunately, we do see that African-American women or Hispanic women are more likely to be diagnosed with much more advanced cervical cancers. This is a cancer that can be completely eradicated in the United States with an annual pap smear as well as potentially a vaccination against the HPV virus. Mm -hmm. if you we also know that women who are overweight are certainly at risk for uterine cancer. Women who are overweight are definitely at risk for ovarian cancer, mm -hmm. as well as those that may have a high-risk family history or a predisposition to cancers of the breast and ovary. It's important to really talk to your doctor about your family history and see if these cancers can be prevented. I'm sure it depends on the, the type of cancer, um, but in general, what treatment options are available? There are many treatment options for women with these cancers. We really hope to prevent these cancers. The study did show that while 80% of women are concerned about these cancers, less than 10% of women actually speak to their doctors about cervical and ovarian cancer. So I really want to empower women to ask their physicians, are they at risk for these cancers and what can they do? With ovarian cancer, for example, really cutting edge surgery to remove any cancer is important, as well as having chemotherapy in the belly. It's called intraperitoneal chemotherapy. There is a drug called Avastin, which is a blood vessel blocker that's been approved by the FDA for patients with recurrent or advanced cervical cancer or metastatic ovarian cancer. There are certain side effects with this drug, so it's really important to talk to your physicians if you're a candidate. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of excellent treatments available for these women, so there certainly is hope for women to live a long time. I mentioned off the top that those annual visits are uncomfortable for a lot of us. Um, and so you, you go in and you, you, know, you, you know you should be there, uh, but certain conversations are hard to get started. So with this one specifically, what would you recommend to our viewers if they want to talk to their doctors about ovarian cervical cancer? These conversations are difficult to start. I just really would empower women to definitely speak to your physicians. I would ask, quite frankly, am I at risk for cancer? Mm -hmm. Which cancers could I be at risk for and what can I do to prevent these cancers? You know, feeling comfortable to ask these questions to your doctor is so important. It's a really wonderful opportunity every year to kind of address these health issues and really prevent and modify your risk for developing any cancer. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to get in and out as quickly as possible, just move on with the day. I think it's exactly. good too to have a list going and in. And it's been confusing with different mm -hmm. screening guides. Yes. Go ahead. It's been confusing with different screening guidelines for pap smears as well as mammograms, but I just can't stress the importance. I mean, really starting at the age of 21, women definitely need to see their OBGYN every year. You know, whether or not they need a pap smear depends on their age, but it's so important to have a pelvic and breast exam and to talk about all these key health issues that we've been discussing today. Thank you for your time, Dr. Lowen. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mary.